Ways are configured for launch. Copy. Bob, Doug, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, it's been a huge honor to help you get ready for today's historic mission. Know that we're with you, have an amazing flight, and enjoy those views of our beautiful planet. Thanks, Jay. Uh, it is absolutely our honor to be part of this uh, huge effort to get uh, the United States back in the launch business. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you for more, but thank you. Copy all. Thanks for those words. The SpaceX core. So again, that voice that's going to be talking to Bob and Doug throughout their mission from right here in Hawthorne, just offering a few quick words. The crew did confirm their crew displays are configured for launch. We are coming up on nine minutes and counting. We've gotten through T minus 10 minute with the crew discussions. Activity is now gonna switch over to Falcon 9. Our next major event comes at T minus seven minutes. We begin what we call engine chill. Pre-valves will open. Those currently separate propellants uh, on the first stage from getting down to the Merlin engines. We'll open the pre-valves. That allowed fuel liquid oxygen to flow to the top of the pumps. And more importantly, when we open uh, the valves, that allow us to begin chilling the nine Merlin 1D turbo pumps on the first stage engine. It'll take a few minutes to get them cold enough to where they would then be ready to pass the large amounts of liquid oxygen through the pumps and into the main thrust chambers when we get to engine ignition at T minus two seconds. We don't want to try to run uh, highly chilled liquid oxygen through a warm pump. Uh, you would flash that into gas and running gas right, through a high speed pump is not a good thing. So right now we are waiting for T minus seven minutes. That'll start the engine chill. Shortly after that, we will also get the fuel shut down. Listening to the SpaceX launch director in the background there. As I mentioned at T minus seven minutes as we start the chill, we will also get into the uh, final topping off of stage one fuel, and then the fuel load will complete. Stage one and stage two engine chill has started. We've heard the call out. Stage one engine chill has started. That's gone up to the crew so that they've got situational awareness. As I mentioned, the pre valves are open. And now we are topping off first stage fuel, getting ready to finish the fuel load. Liquid oxygen load on first and second engine stage pressure. will continue until the last three to two minutes of the countdown. Should hear that call out RP-1 load complete coming up in about six minutes. Again, RP-1 is just that densified kerosene or that rocket fuel that Falcon 9 is going to be used to power Bob and Doug to orbit today. And stage one fuel is closed out. Right on time. That call out indicates that the fuel loading on the first stage uh, is complete. Draining back the lines now. So first stage and second stage fuel are complete. Liquid oxygen loading is continuing on both stages. You can see on the view on the left side of the monitor, the condensation, uh, the cold gas wrapped around the stages as the tank skins are chilled by the densified liquid oxygen, picking up the humidity Falcon from the Florida the air. Line. Looks like at this moment, we're a little more than 90% full on the oxidizer on the first stage, ticking up towards that 80% mark on the second stage. We'll be counting down all the way till about two or three minutes, as John and I just said, until everything is loaded. Falcon 9 Falcon heaters closing out. And then we will be go for launch. 
Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Vehicle tanks pressing for strong back retract. We're pressurizing the Falcon 9 tanks. We're going to open the clamp arm around the second stage and begin to retract the strong back. We'll move back about two degrees. That'll get us to the liftoff position. At liftoff, the strong back will then recline about 45 degrees away. Started. Stage two, RV1 bleed. Launch director called out the strong back retract has started. On the left, you'll see it go back just a couple of degrees. Stage one, RV1 bleed. Just four minutes away from liftoff. Again, at this moment, Bob and Doug are really just laser focused on those displays. They have insight directly into Dragon and the Falcon 9. They're able to see where their fuel loading is at, how everything's progressing down with the count. AFTS final setup started. Three and a half minutes from launch. And the strong back is now reclining away from the Falcon 9. M back igniter purges. I'll go bleed. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal power. Stage one, locks load, close out. Okay, we're at T minus two minutes, 42 seconds. Stage one, locks load is closed out. Stage two will continue to load for about another half a minute or so. Once we get the completion of stage two locks loading, we have to vent down the line so you'll see another large white cloud coming off of the strong back. That'll be normal. That'll happen Vehicle around transitioning to T minus power. one minute and 40 seconds. We're going on internal power now. Just a few seconds away from the stage two locks load being complete. It's been almost nine years since we've been in this position. A lot of work done by thousands of people to get to this point. All our eyes focused on two now. Stage two, lock float is closed out. Propellant fills are complete. Dragon is in auto idle. Stage two, lock load complete. All fuel, all oxidizer on Falcon 9. One minute, 34 seconds to go till launch. Ground gas closeouts is starting. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. FTS is armed for launch. Under a minute now, the FTS, the flight termination system, has been armed. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. T-minus 30 seconds. Stage one tanks pressing for flight. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero.
ignition. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. Go NASA, go SpaceX, Godspeed, Bob and Doug. America has launched. So rises a new era of American space flight, and with it the ambitions of a new generation continuing the dream. 20 seconds into flight, stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9, and look at them go. Falcon power telemetry nominal. M1D throttle down. We're throttling down to get ready for the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We're in the throttle bucket. Reports say all systems are go. Vehicle is supersonic. We've exceeded Mach 1 on the Falcon 9. M1D throttle up. We're throttling back up to full power as we're one through Max Q. Copy, one Bravo. And we heard that one Bravo call out. That's just the second aboard zone that they're in. They'll continue to be on this until the first stage has done its job and they switch over to the second. At this point, Bob and Doug pulling about 2.3 Gs, 2.3 times the Earth's gravity, already moving at over 1,500 miles per hour. We've heard the call out for MVAC engine chill. That's getting the MVAC engine ready to light. That'll come at about 2.44 into flight. Right now, everything continuing to look good. Next major event coming up is gonna be the triple. We'll have main engine cutoff of the nine first stage engines, stage separation, and then ignition of the second stage engine to continue to carry astronauts into orbit. Coming up in about 20 seconds. M M1D throttle down. We heard we're throttling down the Merlin engines on the first stage. And we have Miko. Miko. Two Alpha. Falcon stage separation confirmed. Copy two Alpha. MVAC ignition. All right, we have stage separation confirmed. The first stage beginning its flight back. The second stage being powered by that single Merlin 1D vacuum engine has ignited and is now carrying Bob and Doug into orbit. So they're going to continue under the power of this second stage. Stage two propulsion is nominal which will cut off at SECO, or second engine cut off, at about 8 minutes and 44 seconds into today's flight. So a little over 5 minutes to go still on this second stage. You heard the call out to Alpha, so they're now in the longest abort zone that carries them all the way from about North Carolina up the eastern seaboard almost to Canada. Things looking good, though, getting good call outs, nominal propul pul propulsion on that second stage. Bob and Doug continuing to make their way into orbit. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Acquisition of signal in Bermuda. SpaceX Dragon, nominal trajectory. All right, here in nominal trajectory, so Dragon pointed in the right direction, continuing to make their flight uphill. Heard acquisition of signal Bermuda, that's one of the other ground stations that they're using to get telemetry and data back from this spacecraft. Stage two propulsion is still nominal. little over four minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Bob and Doug flying at more than 5,600 miles Dragon per SpaceX hour. Dragon SpaceX nominal trajectory. Already almost 200 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Nominal trajectory. 
continuing. And while they continue uphill, it looks like we are getting a view of the first stage as well. Yep, on your right screen, you can see that first stage with the grid fins deployed. It's making its way back to attempt to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you today. And we're just about a minute, uh, a couple minutes away from the entry burn, and that's where three of the nine Merlin engines do ignite to help slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. And then after the entry burn will be the landing burn, which is just a single engine Dragon, burn. Dragon SpaceX nominal trajectory. And you heard nominal starting chill for entry burn. There's that call out. They are still on a nominal trajectory on Dragon, still on second stage, and that's that MVAC engine on second stage on your left screen. Again, on your right screen is that first stage booster coming back towards our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. We're about a minute away from entry burn. Meanwhile, that second stage continuing to power Dragon into orbit. Again, if you're keeping an eye on that timer, that's going to continue to burn until 8 minutes and 44 seconds into flight. So a little over two minutes from now, we'll hear the call out Seco. It'll then be a little stage under, two propulsion a little is still over. Good. A little over three minutes until Dragon physically separates from the second stage of the Falcon 9 after the upper Dragon stage SpaceX, gets a chance. Dragon SpaceX, nominal trajectory. Dragon Tappy, nominal trajectory. Continuing to check in with Bob and Doug as they are on a nominal trajectory. Just about 10 seconds away from that first stage, starting that entry burn on your right screen. We should be able to see that view live. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is that entry burn that beginning. This burn lasts about 36 seconds long. Stage two FTS is saved. that entry burn continues. We're just about a minute away from Seco. We'll have a number of events all happen in rapid succession. Uh, it'll Healthy be the shutdown. second engine cutoff. Stage one we'll be looking for down. that uh, stage one landing burn shortly after. Yeah, actually, just within a few seconds of each other. It's such a cool view on your left screen, seeing Bob and Doug on Dragon. Right now you can see the displays that they are seeing right now themselves. Terminal guidance. And back throttle step. We are coming up 25 seconds or so away from Seco or second engine cutoff. This is also the point where Bob and Doug are experiencing their highest G-force. We're seeing the counter tick up to right about 4.8. Copy Shannon. You heard Shannon, so that just means they're in their final abort zones. If they were to abort at this point, it would either be an abort to orbit or to land off the coast of Ireland. Standing by for second one cutoff started. confirmation. MVAC throttle step. MVAC shut down. Stage one landing layer. Confirmation of Seco second engine cutoff. Now we are waiting for our first stage to make its way to our drone ship. Of course, I still love Dragon, you. Dragon SpaceX nominal orbital insertion. Launch escape system is nominal orbital Dragon insertion. insertion. Nominal stage orbital one insertion. Like deploy. And what you're seeing on your screen is a live view of our drone ship, where our first stage will be coming down. Looks like we lost that live view, but we'll wait for confirmation of that landing shortly here. Falcon 9 first stage is successfully landed. And aboard. there you can see on your screen, Falcon 9 has landed. This is the first Falcon 9 to carry humans to orbit. So very exciting for us. And as you can see on your right screen, Bob and Doug are still making their way to their targeted orbit. M1D to recovery one. So exciting today. M1D. <laughs> 
doesn't stop. It does not stop. All right, we did we did hear again that call out good orbital insertion, so that means Falcon 9 and Dragon right now exactly where they're supposed to be. And we need an FRC on recovery one. And it's right at about 12 minutes when Can Dragon will separate. Looks like we saw a zero G indicator floating around there. I know Bob and Doug owe us a little bit about what exactly that is that they brought up with them. <laughs> And before separation, before Dragon initiates separation from the second stage, they do make sure to make, they, they do ensure that the vehicle is not spinning and it is in good con condition before we separate. That's right, the upper stage does small attitude maneuver using some cold gas thrusters built into the rocket body itself. Exactly, so we do expect that separation to occur in about a minute from now, but they do wait until they have full confirmation that it is ready to separate. Such cool views. I cannot get over this view that we are seeing right now. Bob and Doug on the right screen, inside of Crew Dragon, out in space. Yeah, already 200 kilometers over planet Earth, or a little over 124 miles, traveling in excess of 2,700 meters. 27,000 meters per second, or about 16,000 miles per hour. So again, we're just standing by. That separation event should be coming up shortly. Then they'll begin a series of checks on the Draco thrusters that are going to be used to maneuver and then power Dragon on its flight to the International Space Station. Standing by for separation. Expected loss of signal, wall of it sounds like we had an expected LOS loss of signal with one of the ground stations. Waiting for confirmation now of that. Dragon up. separation confirmed. Dragon separation and confirmed. <laughs> there is a great view right in front of you Compound of Dragon December. separating. Separation confirmed. And there's that call out. Dragon is now officially making its way to the International Space Station today. Dragon SpaceX with that separation call. Uh, we have a few words for you from our Falcon 19. Standing by. Dragon, Chief Engineer on Dragon to Ground. Bob Doug, on behalf of the entire launch team, thanks for flying with Falcon 9 today. We hope you enjoyed the ride and wish you a great mission. Thanks, Bala. Congratulations to you and the F9 team for the first uh, human ride for Falcon 9 and it was incredible. Uh, appreciate all the hard work and uh, thanks for the great uh, ride to space. Copy all. Oh, Good luck. Like, proud of you guys and the rest of the team. Uh, thank you so much for what you've uh, done for us today, putting America back into low Earth orbit up from the Florida coast. Copy all. Good luck. Godspeed. All right, so Bob and Doug are in and Dragon space. Dragon SpaceX, we confirm nominal eclipse activation and service section Draco checkouts. A nose cone deploys in progress. Copy all. We're monitoring. The core here in Hawthorne giving the crew a heads up that we have confirmation the nose cone is deploying. So again, that nose cone is going to open up a little bit more than 90 degrees, goes up to about, I think, 105 degrees, and that's going to expose... Uh, the actual docking ring and the hatch that they're going to be going through once they attach to the International Space Station. And also four of those Draco thrusters, we call them the forward bulkhead thrusters, that are going to be used for these major phase burns or firings of those thrusters to actually raise their orbit gradually over the coming hours. Also heard good activation of the ECLIS, that's the Environmental Control and Life Support System.
9.25 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 40 in Florida. Hello from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Jesse Anderson and I'm a lead manufacturing engineer here at SpaceX. You're watching a live webcast for our eighth Starlink mission and our ninth mission this year. Today, we've launched over 420 Starlink satellites to orbit. As a reminder, Starlink is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet all over the globe, particularly in remote or rural areas where connectivity is limited or completely unavailable. This latest launch comes on the heels of our historical first launch of humans over the weekend. In case okay, you missed it, we'll give you a quick update on that later in the broadcast. At T minus nine minutes, all systems are go for an on-time liftoff this evening. And if for any reason there is a hold on the countdown today, we have a backup launch window opportunity tomorrow at 9.04 p.m. Eastern. You're looking at a live view of Falcon 9, our 70 meter two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle, getting ready for launch from Space Launch Complex 40, or SLIC 40. This booster will be flying for the fifth time today. It previously supported the Telstar 18 Vantage mission, Iridium 8, and the first Starlink mission, as well as the third Starlink mission. The bottom two thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. You can see the suit markings from left over from the, its last flight. And the first stage accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of nine Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. Today, we will be attempting to recover the first stage for the fifth time, which, if we are successful, would be the first fifth landing of a Falcon 9 booster. Today, we are using our drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which was our very first drone ship, and opposed to our more commonly used drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, since it was currently occupied by our Demo 2 Falcon 9 booster up until last night from this past weekend's exciting historical launch. Just Read the Instructions is currently stationed about 350 nautical miles northeast of the Cape and about 200 nautical miles east of Charleston. Above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Starlink satellites into an elliptical orbit above the Earth's surface. From there, they will use their propulsion system to move up to their operational altitude of 550 kilometers. And Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since T minus 35 minutes. And as a reminder, we use a rocket grade kerosene or RP-1 as our fuel and super chilled liquid oxygen or LOX as our oxidizer to power Falcon 9. And currently, RP-1 and LOX are nearly fully loaded on both stages and LOX will continue to be topped off right until the last minute of the countdown. The stack of 60 satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which you can see on your screen. That's that pointed structure at the very top of the rocket. This protects the satellites from the aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during ascent. But once we reach the vacuum of space, we no longer need them. So we will jettison the fairing as the stage second stage one, continues on yeah. its journey to orbit. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today using our recovery ships Miss Tree and Miss Chief. At approximately T plus 40 minutes, the team will perform a poll to confirm if we're all good to make a catch attempt and weather plays a factor as well as telemetry of the fairing, its altitude, position, and speed. And we were watching some thick clouds earlier, um, making sure that we are good for weather, just like we did in last week's launch, Demo 2 launch, constantly checking on the weather. But today, we are currently go for weather at T0. So with that, the vehicle, satellites, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just about five and a half minutes from now. And as I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we are coming off an amazing weekend with the SpaceX and NASA teams successfully launching the dads, NASA astronauts Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley to the International Space Station. 
Our second demonstration mission, or what we call Demo 2, lifted off from historic launch pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center on Saturday, May 30th, and 19 hours later docked with the International Space Station. The mission marks the first time a commercially built spacecraft has launched people to the space station and the first time in nearly 10 years that the U.S. has launched astronauts into space from U.S. soil. The video that you see on your screen is Bob and Doug floating around in orbit giving us a tour of their Dragon spacecraft, which they named Endeavour to commemorate the huge efforts made by the SpaceX team, as well as a nod to the first shuttle that they both flew on. Demo 2 is an end-to-end -end flight test from launch to docking to splashdown. It is the final major milestone for SpaceX's human spaceflight system to be certified by NASA for operational crew missions to and from the International Space Station. While Bob and Doug certainly had the best seats for the Demo 2 launch, they weren't the only ones to try their hand at docking Dragon to the space station. We recently released the same simulation that the astronauts trained on in advance of the Demo 2 mission. Head over to iss-sim.spacex.com to give it a try yourself. That simulation, the displays in Crew Dragon, and a bunch of other really cool projects were developed by SpaceX software engineers. Software engineers at SpaceX get to work across exciting projects that drive our rockets, spacecraft, satellites, and ground systems. If you're interested in helping roll out Starlink to the world or taking humanity to the moon and Mars, send your resume to softwarejobs at spacex.com. We will also be setting up a Reddit Ask Me Anything or AMA with our software team in the next week or so. So stay tuned to our social media accounts for details on that. Once Demo 2 is complete, the SpaceX and NASA teams have reviewed all the data for certification. NASA astronauts Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, Shannon Walker, and JAXA astronaut Soichi Noguchi have been assigned to fly on Dragon's first six-month operational mission, which we're calling Crew-1, which is targeted for later this year. We are currently two and a half minutes from liftoff and Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The first and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Super chilled liquid oxygen, which as I mentioned earlier is our propellant oxidizer, is what's creating those white clouds that you see around Falcon 9 when it's exposed to the warmer ambient air. You can see that on your screen there. First stage should finish prop loading, uh, actually already has finished prop loading at T minus three minutes. And second stage is coming up on finished prop loading at T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And that means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch stage countdown. Two, lock load is complete. So with the Starlink payload, continuing to be healthy. The F-9 teams, Falcon 9 teams are tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking good and the range is green for launch. So we are at T minus one and a half minutes from liftoff. And again, in about 30 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. What this means is that the vehicle will basically be autonomously making its decision if it will continue with liftoff at T0. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. And at T minus 45 seconds, there was that call out for go for launch. Again, that was the Falcon 9 rocket making that decision autonomously. Now we are T minus 30 seconds 30 from seconds. liftoff of our Starlink payload tonight. So let's listen in and watch liftoff. T minus 15 seconds. 
Ignition. Lift off. We are T plus 40 seconds into flight and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, carrying our Starlink payload to its targeted drop off orbit. Moments ago, we did throttle down our engines in preparation for max Q. And that is the maximum aerodynamic pressure, which is the largest structural load that the vehicle will see. That's coming up here in a few seconds. Max Q. And there's that call out that we have just passed through Max Q. In about a minute, we will have three events happening back to back. The first of which will be main engine cutoff or MECO. This is where all nine M1D engines shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, which is stage separation. Stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage with the first stage First stage starting to make its way back to Earth for landing and stage two continuing on its journey with the third event called SES-1 or second engine start one. And that's where the MVAC engine lights up on the second stage and propels the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to its drop off orbit. orbit. We are at T plus two minutes and five seconds. So we're just about 25 seconds away from those three events. Again, that is Miko stage separation and SES-1, or second engine start one. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And there you can see on your screen, on the left screen, we had main engine cutoff and stage separation. On your right screen is the second stage MVAC engine lighting up glowing bright red there. And it is a bit dark on the East Coast. But you can see on your left screen that first stage, those grid fins are deploying. And on your right screen, we have fairing deploy coming Fair up separation here. separation confirmed. And there is that confirmation of fairing deploy. Now let's see if those fairing halves can be recovered by our recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief today. Again, we won't have that live. That will happen around T plus 40 minutes, so check in with our social media accounts for updates on those fairing halves. And stage two still looking nominal. Again, that is what you see on your right screen. Stage one is making its way back. Acquisition signal Bermuda. And as the first stage makes its way back to Earth, it will perform two burns, the first of which will be the entry burn, and that is where three of the nine M1D engines reignite, and this helps slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. And finally will be the second and final burn is the landing burn. And this is a single engine burn. That's the center E9 engine that reignites and brings the vehicle all the way down. Very, very uh, rapidly slows the vehicle down so that it can touch down and land on the drone ship. Again, we are attempting to land the first stage today on just read the instructions. 
as our Of Course I Still Love You drone ship was occupied with her Demo 2 vehicle from over the weekend up until last night. We are at T plus five and a half minutes. Stage two still looking nominal. And first stage making its way back. That first burn, that entry burn will be coming up in about a minute from now, around T plus six minutes and 45 seconds. And that entry burn will last about 20 seconds long. Again, that is to slow the vehicle down as it re-enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. Stage two on your right screen, still on a nominal trajectory. And on your left screen, it is a little bit dark. It is nighttime on the East Coast, but we should see that screen light up with, those, with that entry burn, those three engines reigniting. Stage one, FTS has saved. Stage one, entry burn has started. And there you hear that call out as well as a visual confirmation that those engines have reignited. Vehicle continues to follow nominal trajectory. And stage one entry burn shut down. And confirmation that the stage one entry burn is complete as well as stage two still looking nominal. You heard that call out. Coming up next is the landing burn around T plus eight and a half minutes, around eight minutes and 24 seconds. Looks like we lost that live view of the first stage coming down, but that is expected. So hopefully we can get that live view back. Right now what you're seeing- transonic. Right now what you're seeing on your left screen is the drone ship just read the instructions. Followed very closely after the landing burn and landing of the first stage will be Seco 1, that is second engine cutoff, around T plus 8 minutes and 58 seconds. Stage 1 landing burn has started. Turn on guidance. Landing legs have deployed. Stage two FTS has saved. And wow, as you saw coming and down, GRTI, that first stage, stage Falcon landed. 9. Operators moving to procedure 11.100 on recovery one and ECF 9. <laughs> Amazing, that first stage booster has landed for the first time, for the fifth time for a Falcon 9 booster. That is amazing. We're waiting for a second stage engine cut off. What an amazing view of that first stage coming down, even though it, it, it was dark and night, but those engines lighting up the screen, watching first stage come down was Not an amazing view. And we heard a call out of good orbit for second stage. Acquisition of signal, Newfoundland. And now that second stage is going to, uh, now that second stage is in a good orbit, it's going to coast for a few minutes. And during this time, it will start to spin along its central axis, giving these Starlink satellites Expected the momentum that they need to space themselves out over time after they deploy. 
So we will take a quick break and return back here at T plus 14 minutes. Welcome back to the webcast for Starlink. So far we had an on-time liftoff tonight. Stage one successfully separated from stage two and made its way back to land on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, which was the first time a booster has landed for a fifth time in SpaceX history. So very exciting. Stage two is still nominal. Um, and now we are coming up on deployment of the Starlink satellite shortly here in about 40 seconds or so. And we firmly believe in the importance of a natural night sky for all of us to enjoy, which is why we have been working with leading astronomers around the world to better understand the specifics of their observations and engineering changes we can make to reduce satellite brightness. One measure we're taking to accomplish this is by adding a deployable visor to the satellite to block sunlight from hitting the brightest parts of the spacecraft. Now let's listen in to that call out for payload deploy. And again, the first unit with the sun visor is actually on this payload right here that you see in front of you. Payload deploy confirmed. And there is that confirmation. We got a live view as it was deploying from the vehicle. Those Starlink satellites are making their way, separating from second stage right in front of you right now. Shortly, they will deploy their solar array. And over the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their operational orbit. And also, just to note, tomorrow is June 4th. That was actually the anniversary of our first Falcon flight. 10 year anniversary of our first flight. So very exciting time. First Falcon 9 flight. So very, very exciting times. And that brings our webcast to a close. Follow our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. And as the work goes on to build a better, more exciting future, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you at the next launch. the same astronaut training class in 2000. Both flew on the space shuttle, both are married to astronauts, and they were in each other's wedding. John and Marie, back to you. All right, thanks, Daryl. You're taking a live look now. This is inside SpaceX's firing room four. That's where uh, Bob and Doug are sitting today, along with the NASA and SpaceX teams, uh, watching, following along today's test. 
And this past Friday, they completed what we refer to internally as a dry dress rehearsal. We saw some video of that uh, during Daryl's segment. This is where the astronauts, along with the SpaceX and NASA teams, walk through those steps um, that they'll take before they get on board for Demo 2. We saw them suit up, um, and that is really exciting stuff, especially that was the first time we saw them suited up walking out of the uh, the astronaut uh, suit up room. And so really looking forward to doing that uh, for Demo 2. Let's take a quick look now at Crew Dragon. Um, it stands almost 27 feet tall from the bottom of the trunk to the top of the nose cone. And Crew Dragon is composed of two main elements. The capsule, that top portion, is designed to hold crew and pressurized cargo, and it has an unpressurized section known as the trunk that's down below. For today's test, much of the exciting work is gonna be done by the Dragon's eight Super Draco engines we talked about built directly into the capsule. Now to give you a sense of power, when fired together, the eight Super Dracos can move the spacecraft a half a mile in seven and a half seconds. So from a standing start, the Super Dracos accelerate the spacecraft to a speed of 436 miles per hour. That's a lot faster than a catapult launch from an aircraft carrier. I know, and it's it's hard to imagine just moving that fast. I, I was trying to uh, get a feel for it, so I did a little math, and it's about three times faster than takeoff on a commercial plane, if you can imagine that. Um, in fact, one jetpack assembly, which consists of two Super Dracos, produces more thrust than an F-16 fighter jet at full afterburn. So, John, if you were to put that, uh, strap that to your back, you would break the sound barrier in under half a second. Not sure you'd want to volunteer <laughs> for that. I'd probably break something else too. So that gets us through the major test objective today, Dragon separating from the Falcon. Several minutes later, we will deploy drogue parachutes followed by the four large main parachutes. You'll see the main parachutes partially open at first if we've got video, then fully open. These will then control the descent of the Dragon capsule softly into the Atlantic Ocean. And while that vehicle that you see on the pad looks like a typical Crew Dragon spacecraft from the outside, if you had a look inside, you'll see that the interiors have been stripped down and there it is, we do have a look inside for you. Um, the cabin has no interior panels except for one on the ceiling and there's no control panel in there for this test. Dragon's also outfitted with two seats that you see there and sitting inside those seats, we have two anthropomorphic test devices. <laughs> what, no cool acronym? I'll just call them test devices. We have enough acronyms, John. <laughs> <laughs> While the test devices do not have any sensors on them today, the seats they're sitting on are instrumented. We'll be able to measure the loads on the seat to ensure that there are no unexpected issues in this stressing test case. We've also made some other modifications to the Dragon interior for today's test. That's right. Um, there will be three cargo racks with some assortment of ballast or cargo bags and no floor. Now below where the floor would be, there will be an assortment of mass simulators in place of the life support components and some other equipment that's down there when we have crew aboard. Now the test today will look a lot like a normal Falcon launch for the first minute and a half. We'll fly until Falcon 9 reaches a predetermined velocity. This will occur about 84 seconds into flight and that happens at approximately 20 kilometers up. Once we reach the required velocity, Dragon will then trigger an escape. Now as a reminder, the ground is not commanding this abort. It's up to the onboard computers to determine when to trigger the launch escape and do all the functions afterward. Once Dragon does trigger the launch escape, the first event will be commanding Falcon 9 to shut down its nine Merlin engines. Now, as Marie and I mentioned earlier, Dragon will then separate from the Falcon using its eight Super Draco engines firing for about eight seconds. That carries Dragon capsule with the trunk up and away from Falcon. Now, once they finish firing the Super Dracos, we coast, we jettison the trunk at Apogee, we reorient the capsule to come back for entry into the Earth's atmosphere. We deploy about two minutes after Apogee, the drogue chutes, and about a minute after that, the four main parachutes will be released. Dragon will then splash down softly in the Atlantic Ocean, about 35 kilometers offshore. Now when Dragon separates, we no longer have that smooth aerodynamic shape on top of the rocket. So the supersonic Falcon is going to be exposed to strong aerodynamic forces in the upper atmosphere. So we expect those aerodynamic forces will cause Falcon to start to tumble. Our simulations show that the Falcon will likely break apart due to the tumbling, instead of having the destruct system triggered and destroying the rocket. So now again, this entire test will take less than 10 minutes from the time Falcon 9 lifts off until Dragon splashes down. 
But Marie, once we splash down, the work's not over yet. Right, it's just beginning for the recovery team. We have a lot of things happening very rapidly in that first 10 minutes, and the recovery operation takes quite a bit longer. It'll be similar to the pad abort test, uh, but we'll, it will happen slightly farther down range in the Atlantic Ocean. So after splashdown, recovery teams will already be standing by for range approval to enter and clear that hazardous area. And if all goes nominally, SpaceX could have fully recovered Dragon back onto its recovery ship approximately two hours after splashdown. Keep in mind, though, if this were to happen during an actual flight with crew on board, rescuing them would be the number one objective, of course, and recovering Dragon would be a secondary operation. So if that were to happen, an elite military rescue team would deploy at a moment's notice. They're part of the U.S. Air Force's Detachment 3, or they have this really great nickname, the Guardian Angels, which is very appropriate. They would jump from military air aircraft. There's a photo of that happening there where they would deploy their own parachutes to gently reach the water and from there they would help the crew out of the capsule and then onto a life raft to wait for a larger ship. Now this is not just any life raft. There, it has a cover that they can put over the top to protect them from the elements and it's also equipped with food, water, and medical supplies enough to last for days if needed. This would be of course a worst case scenario. It's one that we don't expect to happen but of course, what do we do when we're preparing to fly crew? We always plan for the worst. So this is something that NASA, SpaceX, and the Department of Defense have rehearsed together over and over so that we're ready for anything. And the SpaceX recovery team is also keeping an eye out for Falcon 9. As we mentioned earlier, Falcon 9 is expected to break up over the water. We've got a dedicated team of SpaceX recovery personnel who will be staged and ready to begin recovering debris shortly after breakup. Well, the clock's kicking down rapidly. We're just over T minus two minutes and 14 seconds from liftoff. You've seen the crew access arm, it's back. That was retracted away from Dragon at T minus 42 minutes. A few minutes after that, Dragon launch escape system was armed just before we began loading propellant onto the Falcon 9. So if an unplanned situation arose right now, Dragon would perform an escape. Now currently the engines are chilled in for launch on the Falcon. The Dragon spacecraft is waiting for liftoff. We have retracted, and you can see in the video, the strong back is moved away just about two degrees in rapid readiness for liftoff. We have also finished loading liquid oxygen onto both the stages, so the Falcon 9 is just about ready. The large white cloud you see coming off of the side, we're venting down the pressure from the liquid oxygen supply lines in the strong back in preparation for launch. The last uh, event you're gonna hear, Start up at one minute when the computers take over and the launch director go at 30 seconds. And we're coming right up on that in about 15 seconds now will be just a minute from liftoff. And Falcon 9 is, as you just heard, is moving into those final stages of the final countdown for the in-flight abort test today. Um, so far, weather's looking okay. We're hoping it's gonna continue to cooperate and the range is green for launch. Now, if for some reason we scrub today, we will shift to our backup launch window, which is tomorrow at the same time. Again, this is just a test. We're fully expecting Falcon 9 to break up. So don't be alarmed if you see that happening live. And with that, let's listen in now. We're just 45 seconds from the final countdown. FTS is armed, go for launch. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Set for five, aim high. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Vehicle is pitching down range. T plus 30 seconds, Falcon 9 with the Crew Dragon capsule is heading east from pad 39A. Everything looking good right now. As we get ready for max dynamic pressure, stage we are now throttling down. down the first stage engines on Falcon the Falcon power 9. And telemetry nominal. 
Everything continues to look good. We're approaching the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Vehicle is supersonic and passing through maximum dynamic pressure. You've heard we're supersonic, we're through max Q. We're getting ready now to throttle the engines back up on the first stage. Stage one, throttle up. There's the call out. Okay, the major activity coming up in just over 10 seconds. Shut down and drag and escape from the Falcon 9. Miko, Dragon Launch Escape initiated. Dragon's away. And you can hear some really loud uh, cheering in the room. Okay, you just saw a bright flash there. It looks like that Falcon may be nine. Falcon 9 breaking up. We've got some loud cheers um, here in Hawthorne. The, the folks that just watched live the Dragon separate. The next milestone we have coming up at 2 minutes, 25 seconds, um, we're expecting to see the trunk jettison. So that claw that connects the trunk to the capsule is going to separate, allowing Dragon to uh, separate from the trunk. That's coming up in 15 seconds. And we do have the report, loss of telemetry from Falcon 9, first stage. And there you just saw the trunk jettison again. Some really loud cheers here in Hawthorne, California. This test is looking great so far. Nice view from the back of the Dragon capsule. We're also trying to see if we get the view there on the right-hand side from the aircraft that's orbiting the area. Now the Dragon control system is now going to be reorienting the capsule. We're at a high altitude where the aerodynamics are negligible. So we're going to use the small Draco thrusters on the Dragon capsule to reorient it, that gets it in a position with a heat shield down to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, and then later to deploy the drogue parachutes. Now those drogue chutes, we expect to uh, get confirmation that those have deployed at T plus four minutes and 48 seconds. So we've got just a little bit of breathing room before we hear that happen. Those parachutes are protected during ascent, on orbit, and re-entry by a panel that's up near the nose cone of the capsule. So we're gonna jettison the panel, then the mortars will fire to deploy those two drogue chutes. Again, that's coming up in just over a minute at T plus four minutes and 48 seconds. Now those drogue chutes, when we see those come out, those will open, and those will come out before the main parachutes. That Those drogue parachutes are uh, what we use to begin to decelerate the Dragon capsule in preparation for splashdown. We understand we're getting into the drogue deploy envelope on the Dragon capsule. We expect that will happen when Dragon is at about 20,000 feet. About 15 seconds to drogue, drogue shoot deploy. And there they are. Drogue shoots are out. Again, some major cheering going on here as every stage of this test unfolds. Now we're going to be getting ready for the main shoots to deploy. Now main chutes will be coming up fairly quickly. There are four main parachutes. These are the newest Mark III parachutes. They're each 116 feet in diameter. We deploy them about two kilometers above sea level, 6,500 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. We're getting good views from the Dragon and the airplane, showing the two drogue chutes. Now we're just waiting for the main parachutes to be deployed very shortly. And we have the view from a different camera on Dragon showing the four main parachutes. Now they are deployed in a reefed condition. That means we're keeping them fairly shut to avoid shocks. And now we're slowly opening up the four parachutes. 
Great views coming okay. off of the Dragon camera on the left, and we can also see the four parachutes from the airplane on the right. That is a really cool view. Nice view of the orange and white parachutes as they're opening up into the second position. And then going to fully open. From fully open, we'll be descending about 20 to 25 feet per second down to the Atlantic. So from that 6,500 foot altitude, it's going to take us a few minutes to splash down. Also right now, now that the mains are out, a sequence is performed on the Dragon, which will reorient the crew seats into a splash down position Give them a little better angle to take the uh, slow bounce as we hit the ocean. Now, Maria, I talked about uh, the parachutes came out initially at a reef condition. That's fairly standard. They come out not fully open. That way, they're minimizing the shock on the parachutes. We're also minimizing the shock on the capsule. Again, we want to give a smooth ride to the crew as they are coming back through the Earth's atmosphere. Right. Now, the parachutes are located behind a door that's at the bottom of the capsule. It's below the crew hatch. So Dragon commands the door to release, and as you saw in the video, the drug parachutes pull the door away, and that pulls the four main parachutes out. Now, these are the new Mark III parachutes. We've completed here at SpaceX over 80 tests of that parachute system, including 10 multi-parachute tests of this particular upgraded parachute design over the last few months to demonstrate that the design is ready for flight. And we are about, we're just inside two minutes of when we expect to see a splashdown. The recovery teams are already out there in the Atlantic Ocean standing by, uh, ready with fast bo boats to begin their initial approach to Dragon. Again, we mentioned this before, uh, but the recovery operation, we expect to take a couple of hours. I've heard a call out, we're below 500 meters. And we expect when Dragon splashes down, it's going to be roughly 32 kilometers offshore. Again, we're looking at a live view. So far, uh, all things have appeared to go nominal for this test. All things looking great so far. We saw the four main parachutes deploy. You're looking at them now, uh, fully open. And we are coming up on about a minute until splashdown. I think we may have heard a call out of 100 meters to go. Yeah, I just heard that too. Yep. Now those four parachutes are actually gonna be released from the capsule after splashdown and they'll be recovered too. And we are down. down a little bit early, in fact. And there you can see the recovery boat beginning to approach instantly. I'm gonna try to talk a little bit louder so you can hear me over the folks here. Uh, this has been a really exciting thing to see because uh, we had the weather, we weren't really sure if the weather was gonna cooperate. Um, we were trying to weigh, you know, is it favorable for launch, but also is it favorable for recovery because they really have to watch the height of those waves um, in order to do this operation. Um, that, that fast boat is, is just off screen now, but there's four fast boats out there in the area to begin again, that initial approach to Dragon. Um, the recovery operation from here takes about two hours, but all in all, this looks like a really great test. Yeah, a lot of fun watching the Dragon come down. We had great views from the onboard camera in particular. Now I think this camera is from our Go Searcher recovery ship, which is also the tender for the fast boat. You saw one of them headed out there. And you can also see it looks still a little choppy, so you understand we...
vertical on the pad. The pad deck was cleared at about T-minus eight hours to begin today's hazardous operations. Just before we began the webcast, the SpaceX launch director pulled the nine members of the launch team and got a go for both propellant loading and for launch. Now we're currently loading propellant on all three first stage boosters and the second stage. Now our propellants are an oxidizer, liquid oxygen, and a fuel, kerosene. Why did we pick these two? Well, obviously in space there's no oxygen needed to support combustion. So we bring our own as liquid oxygen. It's readily available and it supports efficient combustion. We chill it to get it as dense as we can in order to maximize how much we can load onto the rocket. Our fuel is RP-1, essentially a purified kerosene. It is safe, easily available, has a lot of history. The Saturn V first stage flown from this very pad on the moon missions used liquid oxygen and kerosene. Now on the spacecraft side, the Airsat 6A team began transfer to internal power at T minus 21 minutes, and just a few minutes ago they completed that. They are go for launch. Now for tonight's mission, we're using the Falcon Heavy to place the satellite into an orbit with an apogee near 90,000 kilometers. This is much higher than the apogee of a normal geotransfer orbit. With this higher apogee, it is more efficient for the satellite to maneuver into its final geo orbit. The range is currently green. They are prepared to support today's mission. And for the weather, the good news is the upper altitude winds are much lower today. So both ground level and upper altitude winds are go for launch, no worries there. Now, as Jesse mentioned, we did start the day with a two hour launch window. However, now that we are into locks loading, we don't have the ability to hold the countdown. If there is an issue in the last minutes, there isn't enough time in the window to stop, reload the cold liquid oxygen, and still launch today. There is a back update though, this Saturday, April 13th at the same time. Now, as I've said before, launch is hard and Falcon Heavy is no exception. We are essentially counting down three rockets simultaneously. So the SpaceX team is going to be conservative in case anything pops up in the last minutes. But as the energy from the team gathering below me outside of the Mission Control Center is growing, we are go at T minus seven minutes and 20 seconds. As we mentioned earlier, the payload being launched tonight is for our customer Arabsat, one of the world's top satellite providers in the Arab world, reaching tens of millions of homes in more than 80 countries. Arabsat 6A, which was built by Lockheed Martin, is a high capacity telecommunications satellite that will deliver television, radio, internet, and mobile communications to customers in the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. Here's a quick message from our customer. One world, one heart. A world so different, yet so alike. Our world, the one and only world where we feel more at home. A world that's growing wider than ever with more choices and more possibilities. The world of Arabsat. The largest Arab community in the sky, now closer than ever, with the new generation of Arabsat satellites. Welcome to our neighborhood. Arabsat, our world, your world. The SpaceX team continues to count down for launch of our first operational Falcon Heavy flight. We're currently T minus six minutes, 10 seconds from liftoff. Now fuel loading is completed on the Falcon Heavy. Liquid oxygen loading is continuing We'll wrap up the very last of it at T-minus two minutes on the second stage. Now another event coming up here in a couple of minutes is retraction of the transporter erector. We'll start a sequence at T-minus four and a half minutes. You should see the clamp arms around the second stage open up. Shortly after that, the strong back portion will recline away from the Falcon Heavy. It moves just under two degrees until liftoff when it will move the rest of the way back from the launch vehicle. Now a lot's going to happen in the first four minutes of flight of a Falcon Heavy. We'll first light the two side boosters and then fractions of a second later, the center core. The flight computer on Falcon Heavy will check power on the 27 Merlin 1D engines, then command release from the ground hold downs at T0. 
40 seconds into flight, we'll decrease power on the two side boosters in preparation for maximum aerodynamic loads on the vehicle. Once we get through this period, Falcon Heavy will throttle back up to power on the side boosters. Once we get two minutes into flight, we will again reduce thrust on the two side boosters. At this point in time, the vehicle is much lighter having burned all much of the propellant, but the thrust is constant. So the acceleration, hence the loads, are continuing to increase. So we will reduce thrust on the side boosters to decrease forces on the rocket structure. When we get two and a half minutes into flight, we'll thoroughly turn off the side boosters, an event called BECO, booster engine cutoff. The pneumatic separation system on the center core then unlocks the two side boosters and pushes them away. You've just heard the call out. They're going to begin retracting the clamp arms as part of the TE strong back retract sequence. Meanwhile, back in the ascent sequence of event, once we get the side boosters separated from the center core, the center core will throttle up to full power. It'll run another 55 seconds. Finally, at just past three and a half minutes after liftoff, the center core will shut down, called main engine cutoff, Miko, the second stage separates. From this point on, it's like a Falcon 9 mission. Other than we're having three boosters all returning to Earth at the same time. The fairing will separate, the second stage engine fires twice, eventually sending the stage and payload out into geosynchronous transfer orbit around the Earth. So that gives you a feel for the sequence of events we're planning to demonstrate on this flight of the Falcon Heavy. Everybody right now is reporting things look nominal. The checkout sequences are good. We're closing out propellant load at T-minus 3 minutes and 16 seconds and counting. Let's watch and listen in to the final countdown of Falcon Heavy. Our retract angle is 88.3 degrees. Ground gas closeouts is starting. Minus 15 seconds. 
flight pressures. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Ignition. seconds into flight under the power of 5.1 million pounds of thrust falcon heavy is headed to space we're throttling down at t plus 40 seconds to prepare for maximum dynamic pressure power telemetry are nominal we're hearing reports power and telemetry are nominal vehicle supersonic you may have heard the call out on Side net one. Vehicle is supersonic. Side boosters are throttling back up on power as we're Max through Q. the period of maximum dynamic pressure. <laughs> Trajectory looking good. You can hear the applause behind me as we've gotten past maximum dynamic pressure. Next event coming up is chilling of the MVAC D engine. Get the turbo pump ready to ignite the main engine on the second stage in another couple of minutes. Merlin engine performance looks good. We've begun dropping power on the side boosters to decrease loads on the center core. limiting shutdown continuing to decrease loads to minimize acceleration on the falcon heavy structure coming up on booster engine cutoff called bico and separation of the two side boosters and back engine chill bico Successful separation, if you can hear me over the cheering. Side boosters now beginning a flip to begin returning back to Cape Canaveral. Side boosters have begun the boost back burn. The center core has throttled back up to power. Everything looking good on the flight of Falcon Heavy. The next major event, main engine cutoff of the center core and separation ignition of the second stage. Bottom middle view shows the view looking up into the nozzle of the second stage engine. Miko. Main engine cutoff, center core is shut down. Again, over the cheering, MVAC D engine up on power. It looks good. Side boosters looking good, still burning on their way back to Cape Canaveral. Grid fins are out on the center core. Fairing separation confirmed. Here comes the fairing separation, and there it goes. We also have successful shutdown of the side booster boost back burn. So T plus four minutes, 25 seconds into flight, side boosters on their way back to Cape Canaveral, center core coasting Stage out over the Atlantic. Nominal. Stage two, looking good with a nominal trajectory.
And as you guys have noticed, the grid fins have deployed on the side boosters as well as the center core. Those work to help guide the boosters back to a nice targeted soft landing. You can see those heading home right now. As a reminder, today we'll be attempting to recover all three of the first stage cores and all three boosters are currently on their way heading home. In just a few minutes, the side boosters will execute an entry burn followed by a landing burn and the center core will do much the same a few minutes later. Both burns are meant to slow the stage's speed down rapidly before landing. At the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way Stage back to land at our side-by-side -side landing pads. The center core, on the other hand, is going too fast to efficiently return to the Cape, so we're using our autonomous drone ship. Of course, I still love you. If we have a successful landing today, the side boosters will be reflown on our next Falcon Heavy mission, STP-2. Now, coming up at about T plus six minutes will be the side booster's re-entry burn. Position of signal Bermuda. So you'll see the side boosters on your left and right screen. Side booster entry burn has started. And there's the re-entry burn beginning. Stage two trajectory nominal. And the re-entry burn is complete for the side boosters. Now coming up in about 30 seconds, the center core, which you see on your center screen, will begin its re-entry burn. Stage one, entry burn has started. Side boosters are transonic. And there you can see the re-entry burn for center core has begun. Coming up in about five seconds here, the side boosters landing burn will begin as well. Now we're waiting for the engine to shut down on the second stage and for the center core to land. Now if all goes well, we'll have successfully recovered all three boosters, which we have never done before. Now coming up in about 20 seconds, we're going to listen for confirmation of SECO-1 or second engine cutoff Georgia, one. AOS. And we have confirmation. Now we're just waiting to hear a good orbit. Nominal orbit insertion. And we have that confirmed. Good orbit. Now coming up here in about 15 seconds will be the center core landing burn beginning. So again, as we mentioned earlier, this is going to be a challenging landing, one, and we are starting. landing on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. And Looks like we lost the live view. Waiting for 
for some confirmation and it sounds like we landed the center core on our drone ship book. We have landed the center core for the first time on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. For the first time, we've landed all three boosters for Falcon Heavy. What an amazing day. So now we are going to take a quick break. You can hear our crowd going wild. Three for three boosters today on Falcon Heavy. What an amazing accomplishment. is still going well we are about to take we are about to enter the coast phase so we're going to take a quick break but we'll leave you with an animation that shows you where we are throughout the coast phase we will be back at about t plus 26 minutes for second stage relight and the deployment of our satellite Welcome back to the webcast for the Arabsat 6A Falcon Heavy mission. We're at T plus 26 minutes, 45 seconds. Second stage with the satellite is about to cross the equator, west coast of Africa. So far today, if you missed it, you missed a great show. Liftoff right on time, 35 minutes after the hour. Side booster separated as planned. Two successful landings on landing zone one and two. Center core shut down, second stage separated. Second stage went into the desired parking orbit, where we are right now, and the center core executed a toasty landing out in the Atlantic Ocean on the drone ship. Now coming up in about 20 seconds, we're gonna get ignition, about a brief reignition of the upper stage engine to carry the payload into the desired transfer orbit. And back ignition. Confirmation of ignition. We are up at the desired power. Tank pressure looks good. The turbine temps look good. You may have seen just before ignition the large white fluffy pieces moving away. That is solid oxygen. The stuff you breathe, it's so cold that it's solid, but it is not very dense. It's very fluffy and it is actually attached to one of the liquid oxygen overboard drain lines that we use. So coming off is normal. Now this burn is about an 85 second burn. In that time, we'll add 2,800 meters per second to our velocity. That's more than the side boosters provided early in flight, almost as much as what the center core gave us. We've throttled down the engine to keep accelerations below the limit for our, our Arabsat customer. Everything continues to look good. The views of the nozzle of the upper stage engine coming from two SpaceX cameras on either side of the second stage. Continuing to throttle down and we have shut down. And back shut down. Right now we're waiting to hear what the final orbit looks like. Nominal orbit insertion. Guidance engineer over one of the nets announced nominal orbit insertion. Right where we wanna be, we're on a path that'll take us almost 90,000 kilometers up above the Earth. Well, now we're in the good orbit we wanted. We're going to coast for the next five minutes or so We'll be back with continuing coverage at T plus 33 minutes for the final step in today's mission, deployment of the Arabsat 6A satellite.
satellite, it'll retain that spin when it separates from the second stage. Now, currently, the camera view has switched forward looking at the Arabsat 6A spacecraft. And if you've just joined us now, you've missed a great day. Both side boosters landed at the Cape. Center core landed, second stage right in the desired orbit. And now we're waiting for separation. Spacecraft separation confirmed. As you can tell behind me, the folks who watched the mission cheering, Arabsat 6A headed away into the desired orbit, doing its mission in space. That puts a capper on what's been a completely normal day here at SpaceX. And with that, that brings our webcast to a close. Thanks to our customer, Arabsat, for entrusting us with tonight's mission. Thank you to the 45th Space Wing and Range Safety and the FAA for licensing today's launch. We'd also like to thank all of you, our viewers, for tuning in to such an exciting launch today. Follow our website and social Mauritius media platforms for updates signal. on our next milestones and missions. And until next time, have a great night. Our mission, deliver resilient and affordable space capabilities. What does that mean? It means we enhance military communication systems, acquire next generation GPS satellites, develop advanced remote sensing and service capabilities, field cutting edge rocket systems, modernize the United States satellite control structure, create never before seen technology, and deliver sustained, unrivaled space superiority for our nation. Let's face it, the world's changing. Along with it, SMC is changing to ensure the United States remains the vanguard of space capability and scientific understanding. We dubbed our aggressive and innovative new approach to the way we work, SMC 2.0. That means speed to quickly implement the best solutions to new problems. Partnerships to forge the relationships necessary for the mutual benefit of the U.S. and our international allies. Innovation to capitalize on the most advanced cutting edge technology in the world. Culture to inspire the necessary risk taking that will prepare.
picture that holds the side boosters to the center core. The acceleration is building every second as we burn propellant and we're lightening the rocket. So we need to throttle down the side boosters by physically turning off engines to keep the loads below the maximum allowable. Two and a half minutes into flight, we fully turn off the side boosters, called BECO, Booster Engine Cutoff. Then we'll use high pressure gas separation system that's mounted on the top and bottom of the center core that'll unlock the two side boosters and push them away. Now once we clear the side boosters, the center core will throttle up to full power and burn another minute. Finally, at just past three and a half minutes after liftoff, the center core shuts down, main engine cut off, and the second stage separates. Now from this point on, it's like a Falcon 9 mission, other than we do happen to have three first stage rockets returning to Earth at both Cape Canaveral and the drone ship. Meanwhile, on the way into orbit, the fairing will separate. The second stage engine will undergo a series of four burns, eventually delivering all 24 satellites to their intended orbits. Now, it's a demanding sequence of events for the Falcon Heavy tonight. But from this point on, everything is looking good. We're at four and a half minutes. We're getting ready to recline the strongback. So let's watch and listen to the final countdown. Positive wide lock, so it does close out. Strong back lower is closed out. And stage one lock, so it does close out. Vehicles on internal power. And stage two locks load is closed out. Ground gas close, that's complete. And the vehicle is in startup. This 
This is the mission director. Go for launch. T-minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Five seconds into flight under the thrust of over five million pounds. Falcon Heavy is headed to space. We're getting ready to throttle down for passing through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. Max We've Q. heard call out of throttle bucket no, for sidecar. We're through max Q. Vehicle supersonic. Everything continuing to look good on the Merlin 1D engines. We're throttling back up on the side boosters to full power. A minute 15 seconds into flight, performance looks nominal. Currently, the next event coming up in about two minutes, we'll hear call out of chilling of the MVAC D engine. That allows liquid oxygen to the top of the turbo pump to get the second stage engine ready to chill for ignition in just a couple of minutes. We're two minutes into flight. We've begun to decrease thrust on the side boosters to minimize acceleration and loads on the Falcon Heavy structure. We've turned off one engine on each of the side boosters to decrease that load. Now our next major event coming up here in about 10 seconds, shutdown and separation of the side boosters. The view should be the side booster cameras on two sides and the center core in the middle. Booster shut down. Booster separation confirmed. Over the cheering in the background, it's going on midnight with a lot of people here booster at SpaceX. Booster side boosters are separated. They're getting ready for their burn back to Cape Canaveral. You can see on the left and right views, the side boosters have ignited. The center core continues under full power. Everything looking good on the Falcon Heavy. Next event coming up in about 15 seconds will be shutdown of the center core, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. Good views of the two side boosters under the thrust of three engines each slowing down their velocity and coming back towards Cape Canaveral. We have shut down on the center core. Go. Stage separation confirmed. We have successful separation and ignition. We're coming up on shutdown of the two side boosters. Side booster, boost back shutdown. And we've heard the call out side booster, boost back shutdown. The center core, you can see, is not doing a boost back. It's headed downrange to the drone ship. Here comes booster, fairing separation. Cross -ranger nominal. Fairing separation we have confirmation of the payload fairing separation. 
So, so far, four minutes, 17 seconds into flight. Second stage looking good, headed to low Earth orbit, carrying the 24 satellites. The side boosters have done their first boon, coming back to Cape Canaveral. The center core has separated and is beginning its long coast downrange to the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. So at four minutes, 35 seconds and counting, everything looking good on Falcon Heavy. Now those side boosters are making their way back. Their grid fins on all three boosters should be deployed, and those are help guiding them to their landing zones. As a reminder, today we will be attempting to, to recover all three of these first stages, and all three boosters are currently making their way home. In just a few minutes, the side boosters will execute an entry burn followed by a landing burn, and the center core will, do the com will complete the same burns just a few minutes later. Both burns are used to slow the stage's speed down rapidly before landing. At the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way back to land at our side-by-side -side landing pads. The center core is going too fast to efficiently return to the Cape, so we're using our autonomous drone ship, of course I still love you, as we mentioned earlier. As a reminder, our drone ship is positioned twice as far offshore than normal, so we may not get visuals of landing tonight. Also coming up in a few minutes will be the call out for second engine cutoff. So coming up in about a minute here, we're going to look for that side, burst, side booster re-entry burn to begin. Shortly after that, that should end about 20 seconds later. You can see both of those boosters on the infrared camera on the left side of your screen. Again, about 30 seconds until we expect those side boosters entry burn to begin. So keep an eye on the left side of your screen. In about 10 seconds, we should see those side boosters reignite for their entry burn. Side booster entry burn startup. And we have confirmation that the entry burn has begun. And in about 15 seconds from now, we expect that to end. Oh, wow. You hear the crowd cheer behind me. And that entry burn has completed. Note that second engine cutoff and the center core will be landing almost at the same time. So we're going to have a few events in succession at about T plus 8 minutes and 21 seconds. Public side booster FTS is safe. Stage 2 FTS is safe. In terminal guidance. In about 20 seconds, we're going to look for that side booster landing burn to begin on both boosters. Side booster is transonic. About 10 seconds away. Side booster landing burn startup. We've heard the call out for side booster landing burn startup, and there you see it on your screen. See it coming towards our two landing pads. Side booster landing. What an iconic view. We've also at the same time, I believe we've had second engine cutoff at the same time. As we mentioned earlier, 
the center core entry and landing is going to be risky. During entry, it'll face more heating and dynamic pressure than we've ever experienced on Falcon 9 or heavy flight before. Why, you ask? Because we have to lift the second stage higher and faster than other Falcon Heavy flights in order to have enough performance in it to execute four burns into all the different orbits. So coming up at T plus 9 minutes and 39 seconds, we should see the center core entry burn ending. Center core entry burn. Oh, we have the confirmation. Looks like that was the confirmation for it to begin. So we're a little bit off the timeline. Center core entry burn is shut down. And we had just heard the confirmation that center core entry burn has shut down. And now that the entry burn is complete, the center core is moving back about 20% faster than it was at the end of the Falcon Heavy 2 Arabsat entry burn. First stage Cape is expected. Now we're coming up, we're just about a minute away from that center core landing burn beginning. And as we've been mentioning, Guaranteed this will be the most difficult landing that we've had to date. This will be a three engine center burn. That center, that center engine will start up first and then two outer engines will start up as well for that landing burn. Now we're just 30 seconds away from that center core landing. And it's no surprise that we do not have a live view of that center core as it's coming down, but it looks like we got a live view of the center drone ship transfer. there. Of course, I still love you. If you're just now tuning in, we're just about 10 seconds away from that center core landing burn beginning. Stage one landing burn has started. And we have confirmation that the center core landing burn has begun. You can see that coming down on Of Course I Still Love You. see on our screen, it looks like our center core did not make it on our drone ship, of course. I still love you tonight. Again, as we've been mentioning, this was the most challenging landing that we've had to date. And this is, this is our secondary mission. So our primary mission, we just heard the call out for a good orbit of our second stage. So we are actually just moments away from our first deployment of the evening for Oculus ASR, which was developed by students at Michigan Technological University. We will be passing beyond the Bermuda ground station, so there is a chance that telemetry may cut out a few seconds before deployment, in which case we won't be able to see the satellite actually deploy on camera or get confirmation of a successful deployment until telemetry is restored. And we're just about 30 seconds away from that deployment. So we'll listen into the nets for that confirmation. Looks like we still have that live view might have a chance to see this deployment live on camera. Again, we are waiting for the Oculus satellite deployment. And as we expected, looks like we lost that live view. So we will wait to get some confirmation of that deployment and we will update you guys uh, in a few minutes later on in the webcast. We are now in between ground stations for the next few minutes with nothing to see. So we are going to take a quick break, but we will be leaving you with an animation that shows you where we are throughout the coast phase. We will be back around T plus 20 minutes for our next set of deployments. And it's worth noting that since we won't acquire ground station coverage again until T plus 21 minutes, we are going to miss that first P pod one CubeSat deployment. See you back here in about six minutes.